We're in late 2022 and there's so many things being written on mainstream media about housing is so unaffordable, people can't get ahead because they can't purchase a house. And in Australia, that's like the great dream, isn't it? The great Australian dream of owning your own property. Well, the truth is things have changed over the last 30, 40, 50 years, but that's why we need to be adaptive investors. If we continue listening to the same strategies that our parents used maybe 30 or 40 years ago, then we're not gonna continue getting ahead. Now that the market's changed completely, there are still ways to purchase a property in in Australia for under $400,000. I'm gonna walk through exactly how much you need as a deposit, as well as what your upfront costs are if you really wanna get started with property investing. If you guys are interested, keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now at the moment, of course, everyone is telling me how prices have gone up for the last two years and yes, there've been a few corrections, but we've gone up by like 30 or 40% and now we've only come down by like seven or 8%. Is that really a correction? Can I still get into the market? And the answer is probably no. However, we are looking at this in the wrong way. If I simply use my example, I definitely couldn't afford it either eight or nine years ago to go ahead and in Sydney, purchase my own property and then try and pay that off for the next 30 years. I say try because it is a very difficult task. Now fast forward eight or nine years, I've got a property portfolio, but I've got choice, I've got freedom and I've got an investment portfolio. So for anyone that's new to the channel, hi, welcome. I actually rent fest and that is my strategy. That's what I've been doing for the last eight or nine years. Now being 30, I've had so many friends around me go and purchase their own property, but now they're stuck holding that one property that's got a loan that they feel like they're stuck. They don't know how to get rid of that mortgage stress unless you're actually going ahead and paying it off. And even after after 30 years, you've got a paid off house, but you've got no income producing assets. Now, if I was starting out today, I would definitely be blocking out the white noise and focus on building real wealth. And how you build real wealth is by investing the right way. And what I mean by the right way is looking outside of your own backyard. If you live in an area like I do, then you're looking at properties in your backyard worth a couple of million dollars. And that for most people will definitely not be possible, including myself to go ahead and purchase something like that. So I don't feel like I'm missing out because I'm still in the market and the market's growing. But if I go and strategic purchase these, the market's growing a lot quicker there than it is here because more people can afford a property for 400K, less people can afford it for $2.2 million, right? So I'm gonna walk through a deal that we just did this morning and break down exactly what was required by the client in terms of upfront costs, a deposit, and why this was such a good pickup. Now, this is just one example of the many properties we actually purchased for clients. And yes, I don't sit here full-time making YouTube videos. I'm actually the founder and head buyer's agent at Search Properties. So if you are interested in locating some of these properties to get the same sort of deals, then definitely email me. There's a link in the description below to the website as well. So let's walk through some numbers here. Now we are purchasing a three bedroom brick home. So I'm not looking at weatherboard homes. I am looking at brick homes because I want something with a solid foundation and it's been there for a while. It's an existing property. I don't want to go into an area that's a new house and land area and then the land doesn't register or it doesn't get built. I don't want any of that headache. I want to build a foundation portfolio. That's like my bread and butter stuff. I want to build the foundation and it's solid. Afterwards, I can do the sexy stuff and accelerate later by doing other things like duplexes as well as renovations, but more on that later. Now this property we purchased for $370,000. The deposit for the client was 12% and that was $44,400. Now the reason we went with 12% and not 10% is because when you look at the ratios for how much LMI you'd have to pay, you actually pay a lot more as soon as you hit 90% versus 88%. It was something a mortgage broker told me years ago and it's basically what I've been doing ever since then. And mortgage brokers today will also agree. If you're a mortgage broker, definitely jump into the comments as well, share your thoughts. So in this case, if the client used a 10% deposit, then their LMI would be $8,220. But if they simply went in and put an extra 2% towards the deposit, their LMI drops from $8,220 to $5,200. So in this case, the cost is $44,400 for the deposit. LMI was $5,200. The stamp duty is $12,000. Conveyancing is $1,400. Pest and building inspection is $1,000. And then the buyer's agent fee is $15,000. So in total, to go and purchase this property for $370K, it's $79,000. So there's a range of thoughts that could go through your head, like what's conveyancing, what's pest and building inspections, and do I even need a buyer's agent? Now, if you're asking around whether you need a buyer's agent or not, then you're about to find out what the real value here was. But when it comes to conveyancing, you need someone to review your contract. So you get someone that's specialized in that, just doing your due diligence, making sure everything is fine. And then the pest and building inspectors are experts at going in through the property to actually look to see if there's termite damage as well as structural damage. They can figure those things out and allow you that peace of mind when you're purchasing something. So in this case, if you're looking at buying property 
you sort of go, I've always heard you need 150,000 or you need 200,000 and the goalpost keeps moving further away because hey, prices keep going up, it is still possible to invest. And if you do this properly like this client is, this is basically their third property they're purchasing with us. So they've gone ahead and they've purchased their first property, which was the hardest because they had to use their own savings. But after the second purchase they made, for this property, they're not using any money out of pocket. So they're using the equity from the first two properties and using that money to go and purchase this one. Now, if you are interested in how equity works, then definitely leave me a comment down below saying equity with Ravi and I'll definitely make a video about that. So if you're questioning, do I really want to be paying 15K for a buyer's agent? Well, the real value here was that we had a good relationship with the real estate agent. We had bought deals with them before. And because we had that relationship, they were more open with how much their vendor was really looking at despite what the listed guide price was. So the comparables on this property are between 382 and 390,000, which means because we secured it for 370,000, that's under market value by 12 to $20,000. So straight away, upfront value, we're securing it at a lower price. Now, yes, you could probably have tried your luck as well with this person. They actually had a higher offer that was on the table and ready to be accepted, but they took ours anyway. And the reason for that is because we've done deals before, we have a reputation for what we do in the area as well, that we actually have clients that will go through, have finance and they have no issues. So it's a seamless process versus when they're hearing from someone for the first time, they're probably going to try and jack up the price. And even then they probably go with someone else. So this is just one of the many benefits that you can get with a buyer's agent. But without sounding so salesy, let's jump into the cash flow analysis. Now for this property, the rental appraisal came in at 420 to 440. So let's use a conservative midpoint of 430. The comparables in the area were 430 to 460 per week. So the income, the rent that you would get would be 22,360. And the loan repayments for this client, because they were going interest only at 4.5%, their loan, which was 325,600, was actually 14,652. Now in the area, the vacancy rate is 0.3%. So basically you can't find a property in this area. A balanced market is like 3%. In Australia, we're at 0.9%. So you can only imagine what rental crisis we're seeing in this area at 0.3%. For context, despite having the rental appraisal come in at 420 to 440, the property manager was most likely gonna be listing this property for about 460. Now the property management fees, as well as the rates and the insurance that you would have to pay yearly, that is 4,500, which means when you take your expenses out of the income you earn, you would actually be positive cash flow 3,200 a year. Now what this means is that you're in a position where you've secured the asset, but not only does the asset not take money out of your pocket, it actually puts money into your pocket. So this means that we've gone against the norm, which is what we've always been taught that once you've got a mortgage, you've got a house, then it's going to require you to put 20 to 30, maybe 40% of your income towards the house because you've got to hold the property. Don't worry, tax will help you because you've got negative gearing, but you're going to hope that the property goes up in value because otherwise, what's the point of having money flow out of your pocket only to not realize any gains? Well, the truth is in most cases, when you go for a negative cash flow property, you've got to ask yourself this logically. If you go ahead and you purchase a business, are you operating at a loss every single week in the hope that the brand equity of the business goes up? No, it doesn't really make sense, right? You'd buy the business so that it provides you income, it's cash flow, and then you would also be in a good area as well as all the fundamentals make sense for you to then have that increase in value as well. If that makes sense, smash that like button. Now here's where it gets really interesting because so many people right now are fixated with the short term. What's going to happen tomorrow in the market? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go up? I don't know because the media is saying one thing. It's saying it's dropping by 30%. It might be 50%. I'm not sure. Let me just do nothing. And the truth is, but with long-term investing and having the right strategy, you can make a shitload with this exact strategy. And I'll tell you why. Because we're in the middle of an aggressive rate hike cycle. Because over the last six months, we've increased our cash rate every single month from the lows of 0.1%. So despite all of that, we still have a property here that's going to grow over the next 12 months by about 7%. But in addition to that, we are still cash flow positive. So what happens to a property like this when the market turns to norm? And what's norm? Well, I think we're going to probably get to a point in the next 18 months to about an interest rate of about 3%. Our inflation should calm down and I think it's going to be anywhere between 2 and 4%. But more importantly, during the next 18 months, I believe we're going to have rents, especially in this area, grow by as much as 15 to 20%. So conservatively, we're going to run the numbers now on a 3% interest rate as well as rents going up by 15%. Again, I understand it's hypothetical, but that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. So before you jump into the comments and absolutely hate on me, all we're doing here is based on all of the data we have. We're forecasting our cash flow and our capital position as we would do in any other deal. Now, I like to be 
quite conservative. So if you're looking at these numbers going, this sky sounds ridiculous. I'm actually being quite conservative with the numbers that I am actually seeing on the back end. So the new rent would be $495 per week and the rates at 3% means that the loan repayment interest only will come down to $9,768. So that means your cash flow has gone from a position of being slightly positive at $3,200 to now being positive almost $11,000. So the cash flow would then be $10,972 a year. But that's why I think we have short-term pain, which is actually a really big opportunity for people to come in because a lot of people are focusing on the fact that, oh, you know, interest rates have gone up, my cash flow is crap, oh, the prices are going to come down. But the reality is we're not in normal times with interest rates increasing at the rate they are. We're seeing cracks in the economy, which means the RBA has to pivot at some point. When they start pivoting, the additional pressure you have is from the world economies. And when we start reducing those interest rates, it's going to bring peak FOMO back into this market. But this time we have less supply and a lot less supply of rental dwellings, which is going to jack up prices again on the rental properties. So if you can go ahead and pick up those properties now, you're not going to have sales agents claiming that they've got yield at 6% or 7%, which is then of course going to drive up those property prices even more. Now, in this case, if we're looking at just today's numbers at 7% growth after year one, you're going to have $26,740 of equity. That means when you add your cash flow position as well as your equity position, you would then be in a position where you've got a cash on cash return of 37.9%. We know average markets grow by six to 7%. Sometimes in the stock market, you can maybe get nine or 10%. In this case, what we're saying is every dollar I put in, which is the $79,000, I'm actually getting a return of 37.9%. So zooming out for this client, if we look at this property as well as the other two that have been purchased, we're gonna go, well, where do we see ourselves in 20 years? Now, again, a lot could go right, a lot could go wrong. But on average, what would we expect to see? And when we forecast that, that's when it gets real interesting. So at an average growth of 7% for the next 20 years, this property would be worth $1.478 million. So imagine buying three of these now over the next six to 18 months, while people are pretty much sleeping at the wheel, arguing with each other online, thinking that the price is gonna come down by 20%, and others think that we might be a part of a conspiracy theory. You could go ahead and purchase three of these properties, which would mean that your asset portfolio with just three of these properties would be worth about $4.5 million. And with a very conservative 3% net rental yield, which means after all your costs, you'd end up with $135,000 per year after you've purchased your three properties and basically did nothing. Now, I know in this video, I shared a lot of numbers. It might have been a bit overwhelming, but I hope you've taken some value away from this, that it's not as difficult as, you know, mainstream media portrays it to be. There are so many options right now. You've got grants everywhere. You've also got so much free education like this YouTube channel as well to assist you in doing things a little bit different. Don't listen to the same people that are in the same position they were probably 15 years ago because it's different now. You've got to adapt and you've got to have the right adaptive team with you. If you are interested in using our buyer's agency service, then definitely drop me an email. We have limited spots for the clients we're taking for the rest of 2022. So definitely do reach out. If you guys have enjoyed this video, smash that like button and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.